This video is going to show you how to take bite wings. We're going to show you both horizontal bite wings and vertical bite wings. We'll start with horizontal, um, but let's look at your template first. You're going to see that you have four bite wing projections. You have two on each side, a molar and a premolar. All right. For the bite wing projections, you are going to see the crowns of both arches, the maxillary and the mandible. But when you are placing and when you are grading these images, you are only grading based off of the maxilla. And that is because a lot of patients, their occlusion is not gonna line up correctly. And you may not always see that the second premolar on the maxillary, that you also have the second premolar on the mandible. So when you grade, you're only worried that you have the second premolar on the maxilla. You may or may not have it down here. Same thing for the contact that you're opening. This arrow is pointing between the molars, but we are only worried about this one contact, the maxillary contact. You may or may not have the mandibular contact open and that's okay. Same thing for your premolars. We're only worried about the maxillary canine and having half of it. And then the maxillary contact between the premolars should be open. We are not worried about the mandibular one. To show you how to set up the XCP, we are gonna start with plates. So you're gonna use a size two plate for your bite wings and you're gonna have two options for XCP holders. So you're gonna notice that if you put the plate into this holder, it's gonna run horizontally, okay? And if you put the plate into this holder, it is gonna run vertically. That's the only way it fits, okay? I'm not gonna show you a demonstration for plates in the mouth, so I'll go ahead and show you a few things. And one is that you need to make sure the plate is centered up and down like this so that you're getting equal amounts of teeth on the top and bottom. The other thing you notice is that the black is facing the teeth. So if you remember from the first demonstration, the first video we did, you always want the black to be what you're shooting towards, not the numbers, okay? And it seems counterintuitive to be shooting through the plastic, but you are, you're shooting through the plastic, okay? Then we're gonna show you corded. Again, you have your two bite blocks. One is smaller than the other. So you're, if you're taking horizontal, you're gonna use this one. You can see that it's a, a good fit. And if you're doing vertical, you're gonna use the smaller one and you're just gonna turn the sensor so that it is in a vertical orientation and get it into that bite block. So let's start with horizontal for our demo. Again, you have the flat, the area you want to be exposed on the plastic side of the bite block, the side that you're exposing. One end of this type of bite block is stretchy, so you can kind of fit it in the receptor and then pop it into the other side and make sure it's good and tight, okay? Again, your cord is on the back side. Your teeth are here, so you want the flat part of the receptor facing the teeth. The next thing you wanna check is to make sure that it is centered, just like with your plates. You don't want it like this. You would see too much maxillary. And if you have it like this, you're gonna to see too much of the mandibular teeth. So always make sure you're centered. You do wanna check this between every single projection because you might bump it on the way in or out of the patient's mouth. So always double check this before you take your next image. Right, for your arm of your XCP, we're gonna use the red prongs this time. So you see these are red. So they're gonna slide right into the bite block. And then you're gonna use your red of your ring and since the red is centered, it usually it, there's not really a wrong way to put this one on for the red, but just always double check again and make sure you see the receptor completely through the circle. And that's how you set up your XCP. So we'll go over to the patient and take bite wings. So for your bite wing images, we'll start with the molar you are going to slide the receptor into the patient's mouth 
And if you notice, just like with your periapicals, you're gonna have the cord coming out of the mouth. You can wrap it again if you need. You're also having the bar come out of the mouth and then you have your ring, okay? When you go to the other side, all you have to do is flip it. You do not have to change any of your setup. It works the same for all four bite wings. You just flip. Slide it in to the patient's mouth. Again, you're going to want to get the tongue out of the way. And for your bite wings, you want to set it on the mandible. So your patient may have tori, um, they may have other issues going on. Typically, if you place it on the mandible, that's your best option. You're going to place it down on the teeth and you're going to set your horizontal. I'll tell you why we're going to go out of order. We're not going to set placement first. So your horizontal, your receptor should be parallel with the teeth. So again, you're gonna, one thing I look at is that this bite block is parallel with the teeth, okay? So we don't have it coming out like this and we don't have it like this, okay? We have the bite block perfectly parallel because if you notice, your bite block is parallel with the receptor. So if the bite block's parallel, then so is your receptor, all right? As you close, I like to say slowly close to the patient. If you say close slowly, they're gonna hear close and they are just immediately gonna bite down hard. So just start with slowly, say slowly close. And as they close, you wanna look straight through your circle and make sure you have half of that second premolar. Okay, so you're gonna look and make sure that the receptor is at the, pre the premolar. One thing students get confused about when they are looking through there is some of them will line up the edge of the receptor with the premolar, or they'll line up the edge of the, the bite block with the premolar. But if you notice, your receptor actually starts here. So that would give you a packet error. So always look at the edge of the black receptor. That is what you're lining up with the premolar, okay? Again, once you have the patient closed, you can double check from the outside. Your ring should be flush with the face. That lets you know your horizontal is correct. So the face curves, your ring should curve. It should not be in there flat or straight, I guess. For your premolar projection, we're doing the same thing as we did for your periapical. Images, if you notice, I'm checking again to make sure this is centered. It did get bumped. We're gonna get it in there and move that tongue out of the way. And what we're gonna do is slide the receptor so that it's touching that bone on the anteriors. And I know this bag is getting in your way. So there's that bone back there. You just wanna be touching it just barely because again, if you're on top of it and you're too far forward, it will not be comfortable for the patient. So put, place it down on the mandible, touching that bone, and then again, set your horizontal, okay? So this should be parallel with your two premolars now that we're opening our premolar contacts. So just like this. If you notice, this is not parallel and this is not parallel, but this is, all right? Placing it on the mandible, say slowly close. And as he closes, you're gonna double check and make sure your placement is correct and you have half of that canine. For your vertical bite wings, the what you're gonna do with the patient is exactly the same as far as you know, getting it in the mouth, placing it on the mandible, having them close slowly. Um, and most of the rules are the same. The only rule that is different is your packet placement for your molar projection. So if you notice with the verticals, they are much more narrow. I'm gonna take this off so you can see. But the receptor is much more narrow than it was when it was placed horizontally. So you're not gonna get as much, as many teeth in the image side to side. So when you take your premolar image and you get half the canine, you should get a little bit of that first molar. But when you go to your molar shot, if you were to follow the same criteria and get half of your second premolar, 
you're probably gonna miss a significant amount of the molars. So what we do for the molar shot when you're taking verticals is aim to get half of the first molar. So your contact that you're opening is gonna be the same for both. The packet is the same for the premolar, but it is different for the molar. And that is the only rule that changes when you're doing vertical, is that you just get half of that first molar. And a lot of times with your molar projections, just in general, your patient's not really going to allow you to go too far. Um, every once in a while you might get a patient that will let you, but usually you're going to feel some resistance of their soft palate um, or their tongue or something down here, and it's not going to let you go too far. So keep that in mind too. You're going to feel some resistance and then you'll know you're about at the right spot.